We're just discussing man's eBay. Well, hello, how are you doing? Views and subscribers, fan dabby dozy. But the weather's not because I'm actually in the lakes, to be honest, but it's absolutely pouring down. And uh, I guess that's where they get the, uh, the name, the Great Lakes, because of all the water we have. They need refilling anyway, don't they? Anyway, but yeah, so uh, this is with news, I'm sorry, not got any t-shirt or plaque to say what we are, but like I say, I've been jotting stuff down and I think it's time, I've not put anything on my channel because I've just been working and working, but yeah, so uh, I hope you're all well, uh, thanks for tuning in, thanks for uh, your support as always, um, I've got a few more subscribers which is good, but the other day I noticed now, I don't know what you think about this, but I had about 370 odd. I'm not bothered me if I have one subscriber, I'm not bothered. I just like putting the stuff on, like keeping people who are really into the paranormal, who love the paranormal like we do. Uh, that I had 370 something, 374, 5, something like round about that figure. And then within one day it dropped to 323. Now, if anything's happened to you before, you've got a channel, can you just comment below? I mean, like I said, I'm not bothered, but uh, it's just strange that you lose like 50 odd subscribers in four days. Now, hang on a minute, you know what I mean? But uh, I had a way with Mick, and Mick said, mm, it is quite strange. You usually get, you know, like three or four, you know, something like that. I said, but never 50 odd. But yeah, so hey, or. So yeah, so welcome to WIT News. Uh, right, first of all, on the agenda, I would like to thank you, thanks, sorry, to um, Beyond the Realm of the Paranormal for having us down in Alton. Um, it was an experience, I would uh, like to say, for sure. It's a very strange place. It's very strange. It's like a... It's like I said, the Alton Towers, when I used to go years ago, when you were a kid, you know, when you had your, your serial tokens at the back of the thing, you know. Oh, we're going to Alton Towers and all that. You know, it's like a, and you get there and everything's kind of medieval, you know. Um, it, it's kind of, it's that era, castles and, you know, it, it's it's that kind of era. I got that in the actual era, to be honest. Um, but, um, yeah, so... Like I say, we've been, since we've come back, I've spoke to Nick, and we are going back down uh, sometime this year, but we're not sure when. We're just looking at accommodation and whatnot, because uh, this time I think we're going down there for a few days. So that should be good, and then we can go to, like, you know, Alton Station again, the chain tree. Um, there's also a lake as well, which is very suspicious. We're going to a lot of places. And one thing I will try to do, if we go to the station, is I'll try and nip over that little bit of a hump at the bottom uh, where you see me coming down the steps and go and have a look at that tunnel, what Nick was on about. So, uh, yeah. So, like I said, I've been talking to Nick. I've kept my eye on the stuff he's been doing. Um, if you've not, please go over and give him your support. Beyond the realm of the paranormal. Um, they've found uh, the last two videos they've put up. Uh, they've come across a very, very active graveyard. Um, if you've not seen it, you should watch it because there's a lot of stuff on there. Um, and uh, I'll let you two view and see what you think. But give them the support because they're a great group and uh, they're always willing to help, as we are. So, yeah, so that's first on the board. Second, like I said, thanks to the new subscribers. Um, and uh, let's see if we can get, you know, let's see if we can start getting more people on board and you know finding out what's actually happening on wit basically you know when we go behind the scenes and we start chatting you kind of know a bit more of what's been going on so yeah um as you see um i'd like to say as well first of all to um hear them that uh, that well i call him h i hope he doesn't mind that 
but he'll probably see this anyway but yeah so um i talk cryptis cracking guy uh spoke to mick at the weekend said he always oh, fantastic he's a very positive guy he knows what he's on about blah 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 so we had a fantastic time so h thank you for the little video he did with mick and uh it was, you know, it was it was a real eye opener, really, especially hearing as well that it's not often you get a witness and then parents have seen something as well, you know. So yeah, so keep the videos coming, um, and yeah, we'll 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 try really. I think we've got a couple of venues coming up, and uh, I'll I'll send you a message and let you know more, and maybe you can join on board, um, but. Uh, yeah, so I think one of his last videos was Grasdale, and funny enough, I've been looking at that as well. So anyway, we'll keep you in tune with what's going on. Um, but yeah, but also in that video of Mick, uh, you hear about the power lines and, like I say, um, the power stations and whatnot. So if you've got any thoughts on that, so you were watching it and you thought, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Just comment below. Just drop us a question and, you know, we'll just try to get back to you and get you an answer. Uh, but, yeah, um, there's got to be some, like, you know, magnetic field and some kind of... Um, I mean, I remember seeing a video where there was a thunderstorm from outer space viewing into Earth and there was a thunderstorm and uh, it was a really bad thunderstorm and there was UA UFOs, sorry, uh, coming in from outer space kind of recharging and then firing back off into space so if that's true there's got to be something with these power stations and power lines and also ley lines because obviously with the magnetic and the electricity runs through them through the heart of the country and the world so yeah so yeah comment below if you uh, have any more interesting thoughts on that um thirdly i would like to um give a round of applause and I think you all should do, and you all should go over to Amazon Prime and watch Paul Sinclair and Les Drake's, etc. Um, Wolflands. Uh, very gripping stories. There's nothing out there what's the same. I find it really interesting. Uh, above interesting, to be honest, because it kind of, when me and Mick and Nathan Pete had the experience at Benton, it all flooded back. Um, so I know what them witnesses felt um, I do believe every single one of them you can tell totally in the voice that something really really happened uh, and the key word I got out of all that was uh, I think it's the same creature the same measurements were coming up and I also think the key word to the actual video is curious because I think the actual well, I mean, we're curious, and the actual whatever creature, well, what, I don't know, werewolf, dogman, um, it was going along them lines that um, it's curious. So we're curious, the animal's curious, so somehow we have to find the answer, which I think is meeting in the middle. So, you know, if you have any comments or you want to leave uh, any comments for me to pass over to Paul, you know, if you've not seen the video, get over to Amazon Prime. I think it's about between four, four, three quid to five quid uh, to rent, to buy. You know, um, it's coming out on DVD. Uh, don't owe me to this date, but I've been told by Paul by the 28th of this month. Um, but uh, also as well, speaking about that, you'll see a great friend of ours, Steve Mira. Um, he's actually on project doorway uh, with Barry Fitzgerald and uh, like I said you get the DVD I'm sure uh, at the awakening so if you've not got tickets for that in Manchester in two weeks time that'll be an absolute storm and if you went to Blackpool or you saw my little take on Blackpool um, it's four times as big as that there's two I think it's two big angers they call it uh, so there's two shows going on all the time. It's going to be absolutely packed. Um, there's people coming from America and all over the world. So it's going to be really good. We're all looking forward to that. Witter going. 
Um, so yeah, so get your tickets. Um, I think it I believe it starts on Friday uh, with the guests and stars, and then it goes on to Saturday and Sunday. It finishes Sunday. Um, it is uh, sitting there and listening to it, but I'll tell you what, you learn hell of a lot from Steve. Um, Chris Turner will be there as well. Um, and like I said, um, I'm not sure if Barry Fitzgerald's going as well, but like I said, I mean, this program as well, Project Doorway, if you've not seen it, put it into YouTube, Steve Mira, Project Doorway, and uh, yeah, watch it because it's just fascinating the stuff they come out with. And you kind of you listen to the way, and then you kind of nod your head and go, yeah, 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 no, yeah. I, I often wonder why. So, yeah, take it a look. Um, it's well worth it. And like I said, Steve does a lot of work um, on his own back, behind the scenes. And, you know, it's just incredible. Especially all these top researchers do. Um, it's just fascinating. You just don't know what actually goes on until you actually start looking into it. But, yeah. Um, also, as well, um, I'd like to say thank you to the person who uh, sent this email in. Um, I'm going to read you this little story, but I think it wants, you know, I think you'll be, if your mind's not thinking after this, I don't know what will make your mind think, because since I've heard this story, um, I've been thinking about it, mm, what could it have been? And there's only one key word it really comes up with. Um, but yeah, so this is um, out of the section called Out in the Field, which we do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it's, I'll just read it, I'll just get it up here. It was sent to Mick on an email by somebody who used to be ex army which was quite interesting to see you said that. But yeah, so here it goes. And uh, by the way, that does pause, it's because of the Wi Fi because we're in the lakes. But yeah, so I do apologise. Um, but yeah, so this email. And what Mick has actually noted down as, it's local, it's local to us. And uh, it's quite interesting because we've heard a few things around. And I've heard one the other day at the weekend as well about something that happened in round about the same area. Um, but yeah, so here we go. This is called, Was It Bigfoot? Recently, my wife and I have been watching the excellent YouTube channel, Whilst watching one of these videos, and a distant memory came into my head. What they're talking about is Mick McLaren's channel. You've all seen it. Uh, Mick's put a new look on it, and it's fantastic. You've got to give him the good thumbs up. Um, but yeah, I'll continue. Uh, came into my head, and I said loudly, bloody hell. I then recalled an event that happened to me. Now think back to 1977. In late 1977, I was in the British Army stationed in Shrewsbury. I had decided to visit my parents in the North East. Prior to my leaving, the Friday afternoon, my sergeant asked if I, he could give him, his wife, two children, a lift to Hull. The car had broken down that morning. We set off in my Morris Minor. Yeah, it's definitely 1977. TC. And the route was north on the M6, then east onto the M62. So like I say, it's local to us. As we travelled on the M62, a piece of metal debris sliced off the bottom of my engine sump. Anybody who's mechanically minded means he's going nowhere. I came to the halt on the hard shoulder and we all got out and I got behind the crash barrier. As I walked to the emergency phone, a number of other vehicles had hit this debris and were coming to a halt. I rang the RAC and the police. When I returned, quite a few damaged vehicles were lined up on the hard shoulder. The police arrived and cleared the debris, and shortly afterwards, a Land Rover from the RAC arrived. All round were shouting for help, but the RAC man shouted for my 
name which was Mr Robinson. Luckily, me, I thought. The RAC then towed me off the M6 at the next exit and stopped at the lay-by. He then explained that he was going to take my passengers to the railway station for their onward journey to Hull and return for me. He said, don't leave the vehicle. The lay-by I was dumped at was a high up on the moors. So we're talking like Saddleworth Moor and we've you know, we've all heard of Saddleworth Moor, I'm sure, but not for good reasons. And some distance from the motorway junction, I have searched on the street view, and I believe it was the junction at the A672. I could see no other buildings. When they left, I st it started to snow. I could not start my engine because obviously there's no sump there's no oil going around the engine as there was no oil in the engine luckily I had my army combat jacket and trousers gloves boots and a small camping stove with two gas canisters in the boot I sat in the car with the stove alight between my legs and the snow kept falling I was passed and I almost Sorry, <clears throat> I was passed and I must have fallen asleep. I was woken up with someone knocking on the window. The stove had gone out and the inside of the car's windows and my glasses were frozen up. I scraped the window and with my glasses off, I saw what I thought was a black, a big black man in a fur coat. He waved and walked away. I quickly changed the gas cylinder and warmed up. At around midnight, some two or three hours later, the snow had stopped falling. A police Land Rover turned up and the policeman shouted out of his window with the words, What was I up to? I told him I was left there by the RAC and they had not returned. They radioed the control and after a few minutes told me the RAC had been looking for me and thought I had got help elsewhere. I asked them if they had seen a big black guy in a fur coat walking about, but they said not, I had not seen a person in a big black jack coat. I eventually got recovered to the garage in Drewsbury. I did explain in writing to the RAC about the shit service, pardon me French, but cannot recall the reply. I am, however, still a member. So am I. I have, I have over years retold this story about that night and nearly died and the strange black guy in the snow. I mean, you would see something dark and black, obviously, if it had been snowing against white. It's common sense, isn't it? I always travel with an emergency kit in my car. Over the years, I had never made the possible connection between the big black man in a fur coat and a Bigfoot. Now I wonder if he was worried about my safety. Keep up the great work, regards Mr. Robinson. Now, what do you think about that? That is strange. That is strange. And Mr. Robinson, if you do see this, I know you watch mixed channels, so you may catch my channel. Thank you. Thank you, because that is a great true account. Um, it's, I mean, as well, the thing is, as well, I've said it because a lot of people these days are 100 mile an hour working and whatnot. And they might not look at the new look of Mick's map. So they might just miss it. So I thought, I'll ring Mick, ask him. And Mick said, yeah, put it into Wit News. And, you know, we can explain a bit more. So, yeah. So thanks, Mr. Robinson, for the email. And your time writing it and sending it. Because it's a fantastic story. And it gives us a little bit more, you know, of things, what's going on around our area. 
um, the more we get obviously the more true stories there are out there with witnesses um, yeah so I just wanted to say that to you and get that little bit of information out um, there's not much to um, say apart from uh, have a look at Mick's channel have a look at the interview he's done, <coughs> he's done sorry the fantastic um, and yeah I mean just keep tuning in I'm going to add we went out on Saturday um, so uh, this is now Monday so we went out the previous Saturday we went up to Winterhill on reports or something so I'll add this at the end of Wit News for something different which we love so yeah um, so thanks for tuning in uh, we'll get more stuff to you uh, but like I said if you're into the paranormal you love the paranormal you love the feeling of the paranormal you love reading about the paranormal get your tickets to the awakening and get on board because it's going to be an absolute cracker in fact I think they've nearly sold out so get typing and get uh, your money out and get over to Manchester in two weeks time so from me and Wit, as always, thank you and please keep following us and obviously keep following us on our, Wit, on our, sorry, our Facebook page. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. All the best. Well, hello. How are you doing? You all right? We're just on a bit of an incline, but that means we're out and about. Yeah, we're out and about. Uh, you'll see over there in the distance, you've got Mick, Cooch, Bob, and Darren, and of course, myself. So yeah, we're out and about. Thank God. Bit of uh, dust of cobwebs away. But yeah, um, we're just doing a little bit of a walk um bill basically we're out because we've heard there's a sheep up here um well somebody's found uh, unfortunately dead but we're looking a bit more into it because there's not much more on the post on the internet so i run mick on thursday and i said come on let's get out there come on and they said, uh, are you not working? I said, no, I'm bloody not. I'm not working. I said, that's it. For the time being, I said, I'm post B, but I'm not. So we decided, yeah, we'll take it a little step further and we'll come out tonight. So that's what we've done. So there's me, Bob, Mick, Darren and Cooch. You'll see them there just in the distance. We're all uh, dressed for rain showers coming in and it's all like really heated up, it's done the opposite, so everybody's getting a bit undressed now. And there you go, you can see in the distance, hang on. Over there, there's a deer just gone past. That's a rare thing, seeing a deer. You've seen a deer? Right. That's good. It's a shame we're a little bit, to, went a little bit closer. But uh, yeah, so we know there's a little bit of a life, wildlife about, but yeah, uh, so um, let's see what we can uh, muster tonight. Um, I'm just trying to show you the incline we're going up, it's quite steep, it's quite deceiving actually, because it doesn't look like it's an incline where it, it is, believe me, um, but yeah. So uh, stick with us and let's see what we can find.
we get. Right, okay. Like I say, it's been a long time, we'll see, but I've just been work, 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 work. But anyway, yeah, like I said, we're out tonight. Um, this is the actual field, apparently, um, where the actual post was took from about the sheep, which was, well, we don't know, it was just found dead. But the thing I can't get in my head is, is like I've just said to Mick, is I can't imagine all these sheep being here if it's a distressed area. You know, animals are not daft. If anything, they're, they're cleverer than us because obviously they live out in the nature, don't they? So they find ways. But when you look at the amount of sheep around us, I mean, they're not even sounding distressed. They know we're here. You can probably hear a couple of them. But these sheep look like they're actually used to humans coming straight through. Because over, you'll see over there, over at the top there, I don't know if you can see, you should be able to see to the car, is the park. So we've only walked a little bit from the actual cars to self and walked up this little bit of broom. Um, we should have actually drove up to be honest because it's, there's nothing that says it's a private road. Not until you get to the more or less the farm gate. But um, yeah, I just can't, like I said to Mick, I can't imagine these amount of sheep being in the same field if there was something prowling about. Um, I mean, if you look over there in the distance, them two lights, I don't know if you can see them or not. Over there somewhere, there's two lights, and you should be able to see them on camera. That's the uh, the shack, the coffee shack, with the big house, you know, what, what we're on about. I mean, a lot of you know the story where the police officer left it overnight and went back to Liverpool. And, kept things to himself and never kind of repeated what he did see up here but uh, yeah but there's horses the sheep it's just full absolutely full and I just can't uh, it's like there's something hunting whatever uh, I mean they're actually playing if you look they're actually chasing each other now. That, to me, is not worth the distress in any way. And you can hear it now. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll just keep uh, exploring. Let's see what else we can find out here. Oh, it looks like these lot have seen something. So I found it a bit more for a cut down the camera she cut it sharp. Do you see some of Meg? Bob? Cook? Yeah. It's a sheep of the thing. Yeah. We're hoping it's a big cat. Where the pole is, where the mast is, yeah. the little tree next to it, yeah. where, where he's shining. It's just underneath that tree. Let's see if I can get it on big torch. No, it's a sheep that. It's a sheep or a deer. It's, just, it's a deer. Black sheep. Black sheep. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. It's uh, a sheep or a deer or something. Yeah. Yeah, but you're not telling me if there's a black cat here that all these would be stood here. Would they? Well, they wouldn't know if they were up there hiding and it were ready for a But it'd be over here, wouldn't it? See that black one coming across? Yeah. Anyway, let's see what we can see. Uh, I'll keep you uh, informed. Well, that's in the actual direction they're looking over near the mast. Let's just see if we can zoom in a little bit. Might go a bit blurred, but hey ho. Over there somewhere, into the boat. Yeah, so anyway, so uh, that's what they thought they'd seen something, but I don't think it is anything to be honest. Um, but yeah, I know this camera's getting a little bit um, shaky, shaking that, so I'm just trying to actually get something um, in the way of a, a new camera. Um, 
which is a lot better, a lot more stable, that maybe we get a gimbal or something as well to make footage a lot better. But like I say, it takes all this time to find out, you know, what works and what doesn't work. But yeah, so stay tuned. There should be a new camera coming very soon. Oh, they just just missed the lights being switched on as well. We're just discussing mines here because, as you can see, Mick's just been on about there was tramway coming up to the actual opening. That's why it's fenced off all the way around here, where it's an actual mine entrance. We've got an old railway track going here into the mines, so there would have been an hole around here. Now that is connected to the quarry, which is on the other side, where the kill fields are, where there's been sightings of the, the two people sightings of a, of a cat. So is it using this yeah. underground bit here to come out here and then come out near the quarry? Because it's never, doesn't seem to be seen in between. Right. Mm. But yeah, again, there's all these woods here and there's a water source uh, uh, and, and as you've seen tonight, there's deer as well as sheep. But sheep will be an easier kill because deer would just run off with sheep, you know, a cat running after sheep. No chance. A lot easier for it. But the, this, where we are now, is where they were talking about where he walked down the other morning and came across somewhere and asking on Facebook, does anyone know who these sheep belong to? Which we, know, we do know now that they belong to that farm that's over there. As you can see, folks, I'll try and get a little bit of a is which is not so far. It is I'll try and zoom in very slowly. You can see the roof of it there. But all the sheep and the horses are gathered round the satchel. Well, a couple of fields to be honest. I'll just spin it a little bit round and these are the actual woods what mix on about which he's actually stepped into with cooch and it actually goes into a it looks very shy actually as a forest like there's just a line of trees but it doesn't it drops into a little bit of ravine um, he said it's quite a, a not really a nice trek through the cooch said before so yeah so uh, You know, it's like they said, there could be anything in lurking in there, which is ready to pounce. Um, but everything seems peaceful here. Um, I hope my sound's alright, I've got my mic cover on, but it is really windy, but we'll see. But yeah, like I said, I've got a new camera coming, and another thing is I want an input for the microphone, first of all, because I've learned a lot of this. Not having an actual mic I thought I could get away with it, but hey ho. Right, we'll uh, soldier on, as they say. Um, but that's what they're just chatting about, to be fair. And we're on about, Darren's on about the land where it's kind of subside. You can see. The drops in the grass, can you see where it's subsided? Um, yeah, so we're just having a little bit of a chat about it. Man. You can see where it's dropped down as well. You can see it there. 
but it's subsided a little bit in the land over the years. See all over. Riding distance, yeah, that line of red line. Hello again. Right, okay, well, we've not found anything. Uh, we've just come through the actual field and uh, we've not found anything at all. But like I said to Mick before, it's probably got moved anyway because I think, well, Mick, was it about five o'clock in the morning it was spotted? It was early morning. Uh, well, it was very early in the morning, apparently, so we're up a couple of days later, so I don't think we've uh, much chance of catching anything on film or actually by the human eyes. Um, so, yeah, so uh, we'll call it tonight and uh, we're just going to head back and uh, have a few brews and whatnot so yeah it's just a sharp one but we just something we wanted to check out blow a bit of cobwebs away and hey ho so uh on that note it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from the wig crew Bye. Bye. see you soon